feel lonely? Do you know someone that is? You might be surprised to find out who is lonely and why. Researchers are sounding the alarm on loneliness, calling it a worldwide epidemic. One that is shortening our lifespan. It's worse for us than obesity and smoking, putting us at risk of mental illness. Depression, anxiety, addiction, premature death, all from loneliness. One in five Canadians are lonely. One in three Americans are lonely. In the United Kingdom, it's so bad, they appointed a loneliness minister. That's an actual position. <laughs> oh, look at all the lonely people. Where are they? Can you spot someone that's lonely? How do you know if it's you? The fact is, any one of you could be feeling lonely and no one around you would know. Because loneliness happens on the inside. Lonely people are as likely as anyone to be surrounded by others. They are no less attractive, popular, or intelligent. Feeling lonely isn't the same as being alone. We all need time to ourselves, and we need time with others. How much you need of each depends on you. Loneliness is how you feel on the inside, whether you're alone or with others. It feels uneasy, disconnected, like something's missing. It arises from a gap between what we want and what we have in our relationships. And since most of us want more from our relationships, it gives loneliness a lot of opportunities to sneak up on us. Hmm? In a time when we celebrate independence over interdependence, material success over connection, performance-based sex, over nourishing sex, when we can build empires from behind our computers, have cyber sex, and meet our friends online, and most of us have never been taught how to have a truly fulfilling relationship with ourselves, never mind others, no wonder it's an epidemic. Consciously and unconsciously, we all have a list of wants, relationship wants, that we have built throughout our entire lives based on experiences, family, and modeling. And when those relationship wants aren't met, we feel a gap. This is the gap that loneliness comes from. It feels uneasy, disconnected, like something's missing. So... How do we close these loneliness gaps? Well, we do a little work. Wants, open, reach, kind. The process is simple. Know your wants, be open to solutions, reach out, be kind. With these four simple steps, I'm going to show you how to close the gap on loneliness. So, here's our wants, here's what we have. This gap can look different depending on where we are in our lives. So, let's work through a few situations. Let's say you're in a new city, you don't know anyone. You're feeling isolated. You are feeling uneasy, disconnected, like something's missing. You don't have local people to do things with, like go see a movie, have lunch, date. I know how it feels. I moved to Vancouver 
married, leaving behind my corporate career, friends and family. Shortly after getting here, I was pregnant, going back to school, and my marriage was done. Surprise! <laughs> I didn't know anybody locally that I could turn to. It felt lonely. So, I did a little work. Wants, open, reach, kind. I wanted friends to lean on and laugh with. So I opened up to getting out of my comfort zone, asking for support, and meeting friends in new places. I reached out everywhere I went to connect with people, saying hello to strangers, and building friendships through acts of kindness. Being kind is simple. Share a laugh with someone. Open a door. Smile. Give them a compliment. Show you care. With a little work, I was able to start building the friendships I wanted, and I got the support I needed. If you find yourself going through this type of loneliness, isolation, then you just need to do a little work to close the gap. Now, let's say you have local people to do things with. You go to movies, you date, you have lunch with people. But your life is transitioning and you're finding you can't relate to the people in your life like you used to. Maybe you're making a lifestyle change getting married, divorced, becoming a parent, retiring, losing someone you love. You might feel like the people in your life don't understand what you're going through, and they may not. It can feel uneasy, disconnected, like something's missing. Becoming a new mom and an entrepreneur at the same time definitely made me feel this way. People in my life absolutely could not relate. Some flat out told me I was crazy. It felt lonely. So I did a little work. Wants, open, reach, kind. I knew that I wanted to meet other new moms that were running businesses successfully. So I reluctantly opened up to the idea of joining a mom's group which was a very, very, very scary thing for me. I did not feel like your typical mom, nor your typical entrepreneur. But I got out of my comfort zone anyways. I joined a few groups. I reached out with kindness. And I did connect to other women that I related to and that could relate to me. And I actually created lasting connections through that experience. I also discovered that there are groups for absolutely everyone. Extremely shy, vegan, grieving, salsa dancing, cuddling, and one here in Vancouver actually called, I love my friends, but. <laughs> I can tell they're gonna have a few more people join up right now. <laughs> So, if you experience this type of loneliness from transition, all it takes is a little work to close the gap. Now, let's say you have people locally to do things with. You can relate to them. Things are going pretty good. But you're feeling uneasy, disconnected, like something's missing in a specific relationship. In the quality of that relationship. You may not even recognize the feeling at first as loneliness. You may feel like you just want to be more understood, more heard, more seen, more accepted in this relationship. Maybe you're hiding a part of yourself or you're avoiding a certain conversation with this person. 
I had a client going through this in her marriage. She was going through the motions with her husband each day. He was feeling uneasy, disconnected, like something was missing. The passion and excitement were gone. And she wanted it back. So we did a little work. Wants, open, reach, kind. She wanted to connect with her husband more deeply, open up to him about her desires and fantasies, and explore them together. The problem was she wasn't open to having that discussion with him, to reaching out to him with kindness and expressing her wants. She was too afraid. Often, our wants go unmet because we're afraid to express parts of ourselves, to open up and explore the unknown. In fact, studies show that lonely people fear rejection and ridicule more than others. So, they stay the same, rather than opening up to possibilities. If after today you feel inspired to do a little work in your life and you feel stuck in any way, be open to reaching out and connecting with a professional. Reach out to your community, to people you care about, to organizations, to groups that share your interests and get the support you need to finish the work. And if you decide to join that group on meetups for extremely shy people, do me a favor, actually attend events, <laughs> right? Part of being kind to yourself is doing the work it takes to make the change that you want. In all three of the situations I've shared with you, loneliness was created by a gap between what the person wanted and what they had in their relationships. In the first one, I was in a new city, feeling isolated, wanting friends to lean on and laugh with. In the second one, I was transitioning into becoming an entrepreneur and a mom, and I wanted people I could relate to. In the last one, my client wanted a higher quality relationship with her husband, where she could openly share her fantasies and desires with him, connect more deeply, and explore things together. Loneliness doesn't need to be an epidemic. The work it takes to close the gap on loneliness may take you out of your comfort zone, but it has the power to take you into greater connection. Let's go back for just one moment to my client with the sexy fantasies. The one that was too afraid to have that discussion with her husband? Well, she did the work. She figured out her wants. She opened up to solutions, finally. She reached out and she did it with kindness. And she had that discussion with her husband. She told him she wanted to be ravished and spanked and a few other things. I will leave to your imaginations. He was surprised. <laughs> and so was she, to her absolute delight, just sharing her fantasies with him ended up being a huge turn on for both of them and led to the connection and renewed passion she wanted. See? In all three situations, all it took was a little work to close the gap on loneliness.